This interview is part of the History Heard project. The content of this interview may be used for historical research. However, no part of the video itself may be reproduced without the express written permission of an authorized representative of History Heard. Today is July 17, 2012 at 3 p.m. This is an interview with Mr. Norman Lear in Los Angeles, California. He was born on July 27, 1922 in New Haven, Connecticut. So to continue, what would you say are the most significant changes that have taken place in the television and movie industries since you began and how, the, how have the industries evolved? Well, everybody would have an answer to that question, I, I would guess. Yeah. I mean, you want to know more than from silent films to talkies to Whatever 3D want. through, I mean, you know, we've seen uh, when, when I was a little guy, we didn't have refrigerators. Mm -hmm. Ice trucks came down the street and guys used to have these big blocks of ice on their back and so forth. Uh, carrying, walking up four flights of stairs to a, a, uh, an ice box, not a refrigerator. And I can't believe uh, when I was a very little guy, there were no airplanes. And uh, by the time there were airplanes, there had been a Lindbergh and every, we thought every plane in the air was Lindy. Uh, so, you know, radio and television, all of that. It, it was a new world every several years uh, in uh, in entertainment in that in that way. And then it's often said that there are five hundred channels, but nothing to watch. Do you agree with that? What do you think television creators and writers need to do to keep the medium vibrant? Well. Television writers and uh, so forth uh, are not the people. They don't have the power to keep it vi as vibrant as they could mm -hmm. because uh, it's, it's a big business is what controls the media. What they want is a hit at 8.30 Tuesday night at the expense of everything else. So it's a rare bird that gets to do what he or she wishes to do on television. And the rest of everybody are in the uh, supply and, you know, demand and supply business. The uh, big business doesn't want sex and violence on television, but they pay for it. And, uh, and they pay for the organizations to fight sex and violence on television. So, uh, if the if if writers could control uh, the creative people, could, there'd be a lot more uh, of the things the network doesn't wish to pay for because it doesn't, in their uh, point of view, from their point of view, rate as well. Then mm -hmm. to the other part of your question, uh, as far as I'm concerned, this is the golden age of dramatic television. I can't get over the amount of shows that people say to me, have you seen, have you seen that? Oh my God, you're not watching Breaking Bad? You're not watching uh, Downtown Abbey? You're not watching? And the other evening I turned on uh, the Sigourney Weaver, what's the name of the show? Oh, uh, uh, political show. I know what you're talking and about. And it is fabulous. I mean, it's just a glorious piece of writing and uh, casting and directing. And so, uh, and then South Park and Family Guy, and I mean, th that's where you find people with, in comedy with something on their minds more than uh, mm -hmm. just, you know, a trivial funny show. Uh, Drama, I can't count the amount of wonderful shows that are on the air. And South Park and Family Guy have done so well like because, I guess, of those, they talk about the, address, the issues that people are concerned about. Uh, and speaking of Family Guy, their Broadway show, The Book of Mormon, mm -hmm. I know, how do I, it, it, it's the greatest gift to sanity. Really? 
that of this generation, it is so brilliant and hilarious. To change the topics a little bit, you own what is known as a Dunlap broadside, and uh, I actually had the honor of seeing it. You spoke to us about it. And uh -huh. Could you please explain a little bit of what it is and how you came to to own it? Well, the Dunlap broadside, when uh, when uh, at the Constitutional Convention, when the uh, Declaration of Independence was written and completed, the night it was completed, July 4th, 1776, uh, they ran it down the street to a printer named John Dunlap. And he printed several hundred at the time uh, broadsides of the Declaration of Independence. The next morning, they were you know, taken by horseback around the 13 colonies and read aloud in the town squares and so forth. Uh, there were 10, 12 years ago, 25 uh, such copies of that Dunlop broadside <coughs> left. The others, there are others in institutions, but, uh, oh no, no, all of them, what am I talking about? All of them, there was one that was being auctioned off and all the others were, you know, in, uh, in museums or collections or so forth. I read that it was being auctioned off, uh, and interestingly enough, on the uh, on the net around the world. And so, uh, oh, one of my twins goes to Crossroads, mm -hmm. and uh, and at Crossroads I met a father of a friend of hers, and he was the guy who ran the uh, Sotheby's office here in, in California. So I asked him, I said, I just read about a, a, a broadside, a copy of the declaration that's being auctioned off. And he said, uh, come on in and see it. It's in my office, it's on us. Wow. And I went at lunchtime, a young woman who works with me, and uh, I looked over to make sure she didn't see me crying and she was crying. I, I just, I couldn't believe what I was looking at. So we uh, entered the auction, mm -hmm. which was uh, five days later or something. And uh, as another dramatic story, <laughs> anyway, we bought it uh, to, uh, I would never hang it where, where too few people could see it. The whole idea was to travel it. And uh, I raised a bunch of money from a bunch of companies that cared to partner on the, on the, and we, the post office gave us a 16-wheeler and a great architect, uh, uh, my friend and there, David Rockwell, uh, designed this gorgeous exhibit, which broke down. If it was in a small town, it was one size, it was in a huge, we opened at the uh, at the Winter Olympics that Governor Romney takes all the credit for right now, uh, and uh, it was a huge exhibit, huge exhibit. And then we had uh, I had gotten fifty uh, country western people to do the best version you ever heard of uh, America the Beautiful. I got seventeen, eighteen actors to go to Philadelphia, uh, and we did a reading of the Declaration in Independence Hall where it was written, which is a great, glorious piece of film. Uh, and so all of this traveled. Uh, what's his name, who started the Muppets, did a brilliant piece for me on the, with all the Muppets uh, playing, con uh, they did the, con the Constitutional Convention and Miss Piggy was trying to, there were no women, and she was trying to get in, pretending to be Abraham Lincoln, pretending to be. Uh, so we had a whole lot of things to travel with the, with the document. Thank you so much.